Все, прям, да погнали, погнали. Погнали. Первый, второй, второй пошел. On August the 15th, 2024, a Russian long-range supersonic missile carrier bomber TU-22M3 crashed in the Irkutsk region of the Russian Federation. And there will be more such cases, says Ukrainian aviation expert, deputy director of the company producing electronic warfare equipment, Anatoly Krapchinsky. A TU-22M3 plane crashed due to a certain technical malfunction. This will happen more often in the future because active use of planes requires high-quality maintenance. And Russia does not have time to do it, he noted on the air of the telephone. The expert added that the weak point of the TU-22M3 bombers, like all Russian strategic aviation, is the engines themselves. Of course, there are problems with the auxiliary power unit and with certain other elements, but the most painful spot for any Russian aviation is the engines, because the most powerful engine manufacturer in Soviet times was Motor Sik, and the most powerful developer was the Ivchenko Progress Design Bureau. All of this remained in Ukraine. Krapchinsky emphasized, the expert said that now Russia can neither build nor properly repair engines, which are, for example, on strategic aviation. This leads to the fact that the planes begin to have certain problems with engines, their ignition. All of this consistently destroys the plane. At the same time, this problem is not new, but Russia cannot solve it. Because of all of this, we will still see plane crashes and air disasters or prerequisites for this with emergency landings, he believes. Krapchinsky noted that Russia cannot produce strategic aircraft at all, but only repairs and modernizes the old aircraft fleet. If we talk about tactical aviation, it should be noted that the Russians can actually still build and they can produce about six Sukhoi aircraft a year. He explained, the aviation expert added that Ukraine destroys many more aircraft. However, these are still threats, so more strikes should be made directly at Russian aviation production facilities. He noted that Russia was actively developing aircraft factories, building new workshops to increase production capabilities. At the same time, this was not the construction of some underground hangars because the Russians were not at all prepared for the fact that there would be strikes on the territory of the Russian Federation. And since 2003, they have been actively scaling up the production of offensive weapons. Recall a Russian Tu-22M3 missile carrier bomber crashed in the Irkutsk region of the Russian Federation. The occupiers often use these aircraft for strikes against Ukraine. The Russian Defense Ministry confirmed the plane crash. The preliminary cause of the crash is a technical malfunction. Russian authorities also claim that all four pilots of the bomber who managed to eject survived. The successful offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region was a real shock for Russian propaganda and forced it to change the tone of its statements. Now Russian TV no longer talks about capturing Kiev or Kharkov in three days, but instead prepares Russians for the fact that the Russian Federation will have to lose its territories. For example, propagandist Maxim Yusin believes that the Russian Federation will have to sacrifice the entire border area. He stated this on the air of the meeting place, program on the NTV channel hosted by the well-known propagandist Andriy Nokin. Calm down, try to look cynically. Although it is incredibly difficult, less emotions, look at the map. At the map of Russia, preferably, and compare these lost territories with the map of the huge Russia. Yes, we need to evacuate from all the border areas, from everything. Prepare for the worst case scenario. Prepare for the fact that these territories, God willing, without people, in order to evacuate everyone, including old women, will have to be sacrificed, he said.
Earlier, it was reported that Russian propagandist Vladimir Solovyov spoke on air about the possibility of Russia's defeat in the war, commenting on the breakthrough of the Ukrainian army in the Kursk region. Russian director and regular participant in Solovyov's show, Karen Shaknazarov, admitted that Russia could lose the war. We must proceed from the fact that we can lose. We can if such blunders continue. He said, describing the events near Kursk, and added that this is not panicking, but an understanding of the price that the Russian Federation will have to pay. During Shaknazarov's speech, Solovyov nodded his head, agreeing with him, and at the end he declared that if Russia were to be defeated, there would be neither the country nor humanity apparently threatening a nuclear strike. There, the actions of the Russian armed forces in this region were called a gaff. In turn, propagandist Olga Skabeva told Russians with horror on live television about the entry of British Challenger 2 tanks into the Kursk region.